from uh, from trains to something a little bit more technologically impressive. <laughs> Elon Musk has announced that the first patients to receive a groundbreaking ba brain implant <laughs> from Neuralink is recovering well. This is all a bit odd. Uh, the product, called Telepathy, uses a robot to surgically place a computer chip in a region of the brain that controls movement. Hmm. Yes, Elon Musk says that the first goal is to enable people to control a phone or a computer just by thinking. He says that initial tests show promising signs of brain activity, meaning that patients with paralysis could one, one day overcome their conditions. Hmm, not sure about this one. Joining us to discuss this breakthrough is applied futurist Tom Cheesewright. Tom, this sounds, uh, well, slightly terrifying. <laughs> I certainly think a lot of people will be thinking this is something out of a sci-fi horror rather than reality. But this is a technology that's been a long time coming. We've been developing direct brain computer interfaces for a long time, mostly for the sort of therapeutic reasons that are the initial goal, at least, of Elon Musk's Neuralink, to allow people who are perhaps quadriplegic to have direct control via their brains of initially a smartphone uh, and maybe ultimately artificial limbs or a wheelchair. It does seem fascinating how quickly this technology is moving on. I, I saw demonstrations perhaps a year or two ago of people playing a very simple Pong game just by thinking, moving sort of one uh, line on a screen up and down. This seems like potentially there has been a breakthrough that means far more complex things can be controlled just by thinking. Well, there's lots of different aspects to this technology. The initial attempts to interface with the brain used actually quite thick prongs almost that went into the brain and they were quite solid. And so if the brain moved, they could potentially cause damage. One of the breakthroughs of the Neuralink technology is much, much thinner threads, which is why you need a robot to insert them. We're talking about something that is a fraction of the diameter of a human hair sort of four to six microns, whereas a human hair might be somewhere between 70 and 150. So much, much smaller than a human hair and yet able to contain many, many sensors in each thread. That gives you a very rich amount of data coming out of that area of the brain that controls movement. But is there, is there potential for damage to the brain here? This, these are threads that are digging into your soft tissue. Oh, look, absolutely. This is a dangerous procedure. Uh, and they're, you know, they're only going to be doing this on people who are volunteering at the moment because they've got very good reason to volunteer and uh, want to try this. Where well, I get more sceptical about the prospects of this... Well, quite possibly, but where, where you know, the, I think it's actually only expenses. Um, looking at the at the proposal for the for the research trial, um, but you know, where I'm a bit more sceptical, perhaps, is this is a consumer product, something we might all want in the future as an alternative to a smartphone. Um, you know, having surgery every couple of years, every time you want to upgrade your mm. smart brain or whatever we decide to call it feels perhaps a little unlikely. Well, thank you very much indeed. Tom Cheesewright, Applied Futurist. I wonder what Elon Musk, thank you for your time. I wonder what Elon Musk's game plan is. What's the goal? Well, I do worry about the old evil scientists. The goal is being able to beat AI. If you can't beat them, join them.